Craig Hyatt. Good to have you here. Good to see you then. All right. So Craig and I were having a discussion. We were talking about backside moves and, and how the element of getting to a good position works. And Craig is telling me about some of the things he's teaching. What do you got there, Craig? Um, we're really trying to concentrate on doing a good forward move, but finding out the muscles that really achieve that move so that we can control it, we can control our time, um, and, and we can be reactive to a pitch and get a good move and get our backside off. And so if we're losing that, we're losing everything, we're not going to be able to be adjustable in coverage and, and, and everything. So we have really tried to figure out how this leg can control our time going forward on this move. Um, and we just don't want to leave it, but we want to control it. So we're landing in balance and we have control here and we're able to get off, get through the baseball and, and drive it. So we've got to train this leg. And so we're trying to find different ways to get into the inside of the leg and so that we can control our forward move. And so what do you have that we can use with that? Well, I think just to compliment that is probably the most important move we make as a hitter. And I don't think it's understood or taught very well at any level. Um, but that dynamic is what takes us at the highest level, all the way down to the lowest level, to be more athletic. Um, it's a move we've made all our lives. People don't realize that when I throw a ball, if I throw a ball slow motion, I actually control with the back leg. But then the minute I get a bat in my hands, it all changes. So what we try to do is always work within the framework and um, no matter the age of the hitter, we have an opportunity to start rebuilding uh, the sensory of how our body moves because a lot of hitters, as you know, have lots of bad moves and they just don't move in concert with how the body is designed. Some of the things we try to work on is just getting a feel for what that inside body, back leg can do and just feel what's, that, what's happening here. So the hitter can now translate that feel into controlling that move forward. Um, the position of every body is a little bit different, as we've talked about. Right. So sometimes a hitter might be open, some might be closed, some might be square. And I know a lot of hitters will say, man, Justin Turner's here, so that's where I'm going. And I have to tell them that that works for Justin Turner. Mm -hmm. That's how Justin's body works. That's how it, it works with him. Other guys work a little differently. I know you've got a little bit, you're almost full legged. Mm -hmm. Your body's more comfortable in one position than another. If I force you to do something that's not in concert with your body, it's going to be a dogfight all the way through. Right. Um, so, what else have you been working on that backside? Um, trying to match the posture with controlling so that we can obviously stay on this line here. We don't want to get closer to the plate and move. So it's two things. We're, we're cutting our space off. We're uh, coming out of it. So we've got to try to match our alignment, mm -hmm. our posture on the move at the same time. So we're doing two things, at, you know, two things at once, which the coordination there, that's where it gets really difficult. So we got to be good here, here, and at the same time. Move. we got to get here and here. So we're trying to manage this space and this line at the same time. And so it's not only just controlling this, we've got to control this and we've got to control this so that we can do things exactly. here. And so we're trying to put that together. And so we'll do a series of things where um, we'll, we'll, we'll pivot in so we understand what our space is like and how we can move and hold posture at the same time, but then we'll transition to moves here so that we work this line. Okay. So then then we try to put it together. Some of the things we look at is we love the idea of space. And you know, we talk to hitter about caring space. So we have a little bit of space behind us. And a lot of people think we need a lot of space to hit. Right. And we don't. Um, here, I don't like any move that's outside of balance. And balance exists really between my feet. I find hitters can adjust and, and react to a bad move, but it's going to cost them in the long run and is a flaw. And some hitters are great enough to survive flaws. Well, 99.9% .9 of people aren't going to. But if we can keep our balance and stay in a good position, 
we can keep that space. So we talk about making space. And everybody's space is a little different. Some place going to fill space out here. I like my hands out a little bit. Uh-huh. And some are going to keep their hands in. Some are going to have a, a, a bend in their posture. And some are going to be more upright. It depends on their body and how their feel is. The one thing that we talk about in posture, because posture breaks uh, at first move, are often problematic. And that's where a hitter will make a body move, break posture. Mm -hmm. And posture break can be directional, but it can also be when we release the backside, we lose it, become a front side move. So we consider that part of the posture break. We can isolate down and talk about which one, but for for a posture break, what I talk about is setting the hips. So we find what's comfortable on the hitter's feet, where he wants to be, and then we'll actually shift the hips. The... Martial arts people understand is sitting the horse. We call it sitting the seat. So we kind of cup our pelvis oh, yeah. underneath us and then set our posture into that because that carries our balance better. And that allows us to at least hold together better. I definitely feel when our posture breaks. I can feel it. Yeah. yeah. And even people tell me, we can't teach this stuff to young kids. That's not true. You know. They can start learning and moving just the same way as an adult body. Maybe they don't have the adult strength, but the bodies move the same. But understanding carrying and holding posture and being able to float, that can be trained too. But obviously our move to 50-50 is a lot easier if I'm in balance and my posture holds. The minute my posture breaks a little bit, lots of things go wrong. Not only if I'm fighting for position, I might be cutting myself off. Other things that people don't think about happen. We were talking earlier about the brain and balance and seeing right. the ball. We talked about, you know, we all know, or most of us know, that when I make a move 50-50, I see the ball better. And virtually every hitter I've ever worked with, major leagues down, makes that move 50-50 on time, and they say, I see the ball better. That's been your experience too. Yeah, definitely. And when they say, I'm looking, I'm looking to hear... I see it better, everything's easier, everything's cleaner, and it's all interrelated to that balance and in. Yeah, and I look at vision and timing, which are kind of intangibles, but they're tied to the same physicality of our mm-hmm. move. So I kind of like lump some of it all together. But the interesting thing we talked about is the, the move to balance and maintaining balance has to involve keeping that brain in a happy position. And it's a happy position, the minute the brain's off balance, it will start firing muscles mm-hmm. because it thinks it's going to fall. I can't control that. The minute I take my brain out of balance, it starts firing muscles. So if my brain moves out of balance at any point, it's going to fire muscles against what I'm trying to do. It's going to limit my overall efficiency of a move because muscles are going to be firing in a different direction too. But importantly, the other thing happens is that means my brain's distracted and panicking. It thinks it's going to fall over. And no matter what I tell it, it's going to panic. It's just built in. So that also inhibits ability to see the ball, and it speeds up the game too. And that's what we talked about moves of balance all, all predicated on. That also puts my head in a better position that I can go. You see a lot of our hitters now, we get hitters a little bit off center, they're not square. Because when I'm square, I also have upper body shifts to accommodate. When I'm open, the good thing is, I can set my head, both eyes on the ball comfortably, set my posture, and by opening, I can take my right, my front shoulder, my lead shoulder, kind of out of the equation a little bit, because when it engages, it creates other issues. But again, then I can set my posture, use my backside to carry that to a good hitting position. So simple. You and I both know it's not, but it can be worked on, and it gets easier and easier and easier. And it's interesting over a course of, depending on your schedule and the level that you play at, everyone goes through periods of seeing the ball and not seeing the ball. And those times that you're not seeing the ball, what is the little move change that you're making? And you probably don't even know it, but any little out-of-balance move throws off the vision just like you're talk- talking. So if you can create a hitter that has total body awareness, they know what move and what muscles are going to get them to that spot, you can create consistency over a long period of time. And when the hitter really understands that, they can put together those times where they're seeing the ball a lot longer. And that's, you know, I mean, that's where the magic <laughs> happens for a hitter 
over a course of a over a season, but they they will fund the body will figure it out every once in a while, and they're like, oh, that feels really good, and now I'm seeing it, but they don't know why. Or something magical happens, some little fix that they say, yeah. I don't know what I did. Yeah. And this oh. is good. Let's write it out as long as, oh, and now I've lost it. Now I'm trying to overthink, okay, what was that? And then we try to help them and then we give them too much. But really, it's just your body found, your body found the right spot. Uh-huh. So what is that spot at this <laughs> point in time? Yes. Because we look at a lot of things. Because injuries or you could be sore, you could be tired. You could be whatever. You sat on a plane for whatever, and you Everything learned something affected. bad. Mm-hmm. So you've got to know what makes your good move. Or I make a move, let's say, uh, in a front toss or in BP, and it I seem like it's doing okay, but then I get the game, and suddenly it's off. So a lot of it, I like the ability to kind of check where you're at. You have kind of the, and I call it the video idea of what where I'm at when I'm good, just kind of have a checklist. But the key being is that there's game time, and game time in game adjustments. And as I've told you, at the big league level, some of the biggest problems I hear and work with is usually going to be timing related. I'm late. You know, I'm grinding. I'm, I'm not getting my good swing on. Mm-hmm. And that always usually follows, man, I'm not seeing the ball well. Yes. Yeah. And I think some of the human nature is when I'm not seeing the ball well, uh, people get tentative. I want to wait and see. One of the key is I need to get to my position. I need to go so I can see and allow myself to see. But it has to be clear of all those other distractions, including thought like, I'm in a scuffle, you know. You've got to clear that mind and then do everything physically possible to keep everything. So at the very basic, if I see the ball, I've got a better chance to get my good swing off. Yeah, you're, when you are seeing it, you are moving. Yeah. And then you, yeah, and then you try not to move to see it. You're not doing what, what made you successful in the first place. Well, the thing gets me also, uh, I, I know, and... I can't ever thank you enough for all you do for baseball because the work you do on social media is just incredible. And I well, truly mean that because you. just being able to have people watch and learn and see. Um, and though I will say that there's interpretations of the swing that I disagree with, it still gives people a venue to kind of see what's going on without a lot of content and dialogue. And frankly, I wish you had more dialogue because <laughs> I think you put a lot on the table that really – is instrumental in understanding this is where we need to take, not just high-level hitters. This is where grassroots needs to go. But we talked about vision and timing, and we realized some of the old adages of stay back, uh-huh. you know, load back, all these other things that actually are 100% on the wrong side of what we want to do. Right. And people have always asked me, well, this is what they did, or, or this. That person got away with it <laughs> to a yeah. certain level. And we can see many major league swings over generations where people glom onto one swing and say, well, look what he did. And that, that might be one of the best athletes of his generation to do what he did when you understand how good you have to be to play at the major league level. And for the 10,000 people that tried to copy that, they failed because it didn't work for them and they couldn't survive. They did not have the athleticism or the gift of hand-eye coordination or strength or eyesight, whatever it was, because everybody has other gifts too. But I would sadly say that most of the instruction that I see for grassroots level, you know, amateur hitters up into college, and obviously higher, (laughs) but it's pretty bad. Not from the standpoint of, you know, trying to argue about the swing. Now, I can argue about the swing, but we're not moving properly in concert with our body. And once we do, it's amazing the little changes that happen. Right. Well, and a lot of those guys that did some of those things that are, are uh, out of the norm probably did something else really, really well. Yeah. And we look at the stuff that they did, but you're like, well, you got to look at this other thing that they're doing really well to compensate for that. Um, and maybe if they didn't do that, who knows if they couldn't have been better? I mean, that, that's a scary thought. You know what I mean? Some guys could be even be better than what they were if... But what we look at the thing is, you know, fix it if it doesn't appear broken. But we also look at uh, when we're looking with high-level hitters, um, the effects of injury, age, uh, changes in the game, the evolution of pitching in the last five years is beyond, you know, concept for most people. They 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 didn't see what happened. But we're the I've been blessed to work with a lot of really great hitters. And they never stop trying to get better. 
that's a key, and they can recognize things. And I think that even grassroots level players can be taught to feel their bodies. And that's baseball or softball. Yeah. To me, one swing. But these people are out there working on their game. But they can also work on their body and you can start getting awareness. And many times I'll work with young hitter and I can't feel that. Heck, there's big leaguers I'll work with and I say, I can't feel that. You will. Yeah. Because you've never been taught to feel it. And I go, right. oh, there it is. And suddenly you've got people like, that was this, you know. Stick back so they can identify things because they've never been taught to identify them. And some of their mistakes were actually integrated into what they were doing. Yeah. So they never recognized it as such. Um, body awareness, and not, not everybody has the same body awareness, but I think there's a lot of room for teaching. And what we tell our young hitters, 90% of what you do to get to be a good hitter is never swinging the bat at a ball. It's getting everything prepared for that moment. Then you work on the aspect of hitting the ball. And that's what we're not doing. That's what I see with the 13, 14-year-olds. And that is the right age, I think, for instruction. Mm -hmm. Because they're mentally starting to grasp some ideas. Their body is starting to mature a little bit. So that is. But if you give them something wrong that doesn't match, and they think that's the truth, they're then, then that's going to get ingrained for years and years and a lot of swings. I think that we can take you. And kids are swinging a lot these days. Oh yeah, over and, and if you're swinging with something that's contrary to what you really should be working on, mm -hmm. um, it, it's going to be it's going to be a bad thing. I've and I do work with amateurs, and I've got kids that work on different ideas and methodologies and stuff they found uh, in social media, or, and they ingrain patterns of movement. That in some cases, by the time they're 14 or 15, it's a coin flip whether we're going to be able to get it fixed so they can compete at a high school level or a college level. And sometimes they have greater strength and can get past that flaw. But it's going to stop right. because this game speeds up really fast. And if you can't cover and if you can't adjust, this game is going to you know, get right, when those right kids, by you. Those kids don't know what their natural is. I mean, you see all the little kids, in, you know, in diapers. I saw one the other day. The kid had a beautiful, beautiful natural swing. Well, okay, that's his natural. I would love to see him do that when he's 20 years old. We but coach we, him out of them. Right. So if we give them a lot of information before they even can comprehend how they move, which would be like 8, 9, 10, they think their natural is this top move. Uh huh. And so we don't even Show know me the what top move, just so we can, so people can see. You know the top move. I know the top move. Go ahead. Show the, it. the correct move? No, the bad move. Well, a lot of it is starting from getting back, floating forward, but then it's it's just an early shoulder, and it just comes off. Yeah. And we're coming. So we're losing the backside. We're losing our direction here. And then it's just all spin. And so we are losing coverage in time through a body move where we think we're trying to be strong. But the problem is we got to try to hit a moving pitch. And Doesn't work that way. That's not going to be consistent and efficient. Well, you yeah. think about it. I have blessed to have a young son that I've been able to watch growing up through the grassroots too. And as you know, I do work with a lot of amateurs. Yeah. But it starts when I mean, the first time, again, I've seen their first swing being very natural. It's like, just leave that alone. Yeah. But then they get into T-ball, or they start hitting a ball off T, and somebody puts a T right about there at the ball above it, and there's no way they can hit that ball without actually executing bad mechanics. So they swing around the ball, they make contact the only way they can, and everybody claps because you made contact, yay! So what's reinforced in their brain is, oh, that's what I have to do. And it starts there. And it's the dad who is really tall to the short kid, it was sort of like this in a half cage, and it's... Yes. And what they're talking about is good I'm going to get son. the bat on the ball. Yeah, I got it. And if I make contact, it doesn't matter. That's a good thing. Whereas I look at it, they, for instance, people ask me, what do I do? Put a small T out in front of that hitter and go and let them swing naturally. Boom, let them get that posterior chain working through mm -hmm. and suddenly realize those little T-ball fields can't hold these kids. Oh, no. now they're harnessing yeah. their body. But so from the very earliest level... Not only are they taught that, but the, con the con concept, you know, let's get that bat on the ball. Okay, that already means that I'm off plane. Right. And if my shoulder's off here, I have no legs. Right. 
and I really have no coverage or any of the things we're going to need. So you come around the plane, my shoulders are here first, the other thing moves my head, so obviously I can't maintain you know, vision very well. But I've lost my legs, and I really have nothing to it. But I can create this force that I think works, hit the ball, and everybody's applauding again. But what people don't understand is the minute those shoulders move, or then I'm in my shoulders, I don't have legs. People have tried to argue that. I'm like, think about this. If my shoulders are up, I'm out of my legs, and I'm now shoulder-driven. Mm -hmm. This is not my legs. Spinning, years ago, we used to have guys... Squashing the bug right. and clearing that front hip. And and that was the absolute, which is worse than you can teach a hitter. Because the body never works right. The body's not made for that. Now, at a lower level, you can run into balls, time them up, and, and get to the barrel and hit them. Right. But that's a flaw. It's a terrible physical flaw. And you're really not even using your legs well. Yeah. And because okay. ever see a pitcher do that? Yeah. So I tell people... You know, a lot of people talk about golf being like an overlay. Oh, golf's not the overlay for the swing. I think throwing is a better overlay, and possibly even some tennis moves are yeah. better overlays for how the body should work in a baseball swing. Because, the, you know, we talk about loading and getting good position. People don't understand all how it all works. Right. And it's from bottom up. And, we, you know, we're telling the, tell the kids go, you know, gap to gap and hit it here, but then we tell them to do it from there. <laughs> So, yeah, so I, it might be perfect against a lollipopper, but we teach this swing, but then we applaud this hit. So, like, that's not going to line up, and especially when you go higher and higher, that we need to have something that's... Well, one of the things uh, we talk about is, you know, the inside pitch. And countless generations have been told, I'm going to hit the inside pitch, get around that inside pitch, turn on it. Like, that's the worst way to hit the inside pitch. Because of what? I'm going to stay through the inside pitch, and I'm going to drive it out that way. Yeah. I'm staying through it, because if I can stay through the inside pitch, that means that same move covers everything else on the zone. But the minute I turn, first, I'm physically ineffective. I am not efficient, any stretch of the imagination. And all I'm now waiting for is trying to articulate the barrel and get it to the ball. And that swing is actually a grind. And yeah. you and I remember we right. talked about it. Most hitters think the grind is normal. Yeah. They, they feel, well, I grind all the time. Well, you do because your body's not working right. And the word that always motivates me and has been surrounding everything I've done in baseball is the word, man, that felt effortless. Yeah. So a good swing should be the feeling of effortless. And the reason it feels effortless is because the body's working the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. But the kids, players don't understand that because... They have been grinding their whole life. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is when you grind and do that, you're always worried about what the barrel's going to do. And we have no adjustability. But if you start thinking for working well, the barrel really becomes secondary to the move itself. And be able to get on plane, adjust, and let this follow. Yeah. Because out here, I have no adjustability. I'm done. In here... I got a chance. Yeah. I can do a lot of things from there. And I'm also strong in balance. Uh -huh. And when you look at all those shoulder moves, right. if we make a shoulder move, what happens to your back leg? Yeah. It's gone. And, you know, I've heard people say, squash the bug. Right. You know, 20 years ago, it's like, please don't. I know it's still out there. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to stay out there. But I wish it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but we start thinking about what is our goal and whether you be you know six years old or 26 years old i want to hit through every pitch i see right i want to be athletic the only way i can do that if my body moves the way it's designed which automatically is athletic right because it's about balance and that's kind of talking about the barrel will do what your body does and so uh, you know that's a reflection of what you do and if you want to be good there Let's have your body move there, and your barrel will follow that line. You have a pitch line. You have a body line. Let's get those two together on a long period of time. So that, yeah, and, and longer. Then, yeah, I want but, a chance. And now the ball's moving and sinking, and everything's working vertically. So we gotta we gotta cover a lot of stuff, and so this is not going to be able to cut it. No, and that's what happens. I, I see hitters get to a point where they're very successful at a certain level, and you know, well, hey, this is what I do. 
And this is how I do it well. Mm-hmm. Then suddenly it's like, I'm not doing so well. You know, that's when the content comes. And it's like, okay, you need to change because what you're doing is not going to translate any farther. In fact, now you're at the law of diminishing return. And I don't know if it's when a, a boy is 15 or a girl is 15. I don't know if it's when they're 21. But at some point, those flaws are going to bring this game to a screeching halt. And now, as we talked about, how deeply ingrained are those movement patterns? Right. How deeply ingrained is the thought? Uh-huh. Because of mine now has basically had years of this is what I do. You know, condition response to our condition response to condition stimulus. Here's a pitch. This is what I do. Right. And so you're now retraining a lot of pieces of just the element of what a hitter has to do uh, gets tougher and tougher. Yeah. But I think you can start younger kids just feeling, understanding how to move in balance. Most definitely. And just, pay, hey, just stay balanced. I had a literally coach reach out to me and I said, just teach them balance. Yeah. You know, same thing. Step to balance, move to balance, and swing through the ball. Go right. ahead. Just keep it simple. And then now when they get in that age where they're starting to get a little bit more, you know, body aware and, and strengthen yeah. up, we can expand on that. And you know as well as I do. Every 14-year-old is on the same wavelength. So the a coach has to be able to work within that. Right. I look at the man-child. I mean, you look at this, and he looks like a man. But he's still a boy. Right. His body, he doesn't have body awareness. It looks like he should, but he doesn't. A lot of times they have less. Yes, because they most of these bigger children, you know. They, they just use that muscle to they, do something. They're strong. It looks so fantastic, and it that. produces that level. Yeah, and then suddenly they come to a point where they've been doing that, it's working, everybody's clapping and applauding. Usually by the time they get to high school, it gets a little, you know, philosophy picks up, and now they have to start continuing with that. People are actually throw off speed for strikes yeah. and spin. And it's like, where did it go? Well, it's funny, is we say it's like these kids are not major leaders, but they have a human body, and the human body has joints and muscles, and it works, a 14 year old body works like a 28. Obviously, there's differences when you grow and get more coordinated and balanced, but we can teach them how to move. The move is, is the Absolutely. same. It's not going to look the same. It's not going to be as fast or as powerful. But they have a body just like the major leaguers, and they can train those parts. To work in, yeah. And then when they add the strength, they become major leaguers because they have a good move. It's funny because, like, you know, I, I record all the home run swings. So my eyes are overtrained, probably overtrained to what a good swing is. And I actually... I have a hard time watching live games because I've ingrained 20 home runs from X player. And then I see that I don't see life. that swing. I'm like, oh, he's off. And then I get in there. I'm like, hey, you got to do this. You got to do this. I've seen 20 of your good swings. You know, you're just a little off. You're just a little off there. And, I, you know, I, I, I get mad at the TV and I yell at the TV. And my wife thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> like, no, no, no. You're, you're, dude, like, so, but. We'll have to teach you to be a little more quieter analytical. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but all those swings, when we say guys are not trying to hit home runs, well, they're not, but it's their good swing. It's their easy swing. I want they're to miss. Easy. I want to miss yeah. with the best swing I can. Yeah. And we also know that over the course of the major league, we're playing 160 games. We're going to get off about 850 swings if we're in there every day. That's not counting everything you do in practice. That's not everything you do in BP all the way through. But all the idea is just be as consistent as possible. Yeah. And I think young hitters, particularly as they're, you know, kind of getting into themselves, they try, you know, now you've got this idea of hit the ball hard, exit velocity, and yeah. you try to hit the ball out rather than let's get a good swing off and see what happens. Yeah. And what happens is there's a lot more overswinging going on. And they're not able to duplicate because their only point is they're trying to hit a point in time as hard as they can, which to me is not real. Yeah. But if they can just be consistent and realize we're all going to be fooled a little bit, we're all going to get stuck and make a, a tougher move, and it's just the guys that have the best success are pretty consistent. Yeah. And they, even a great hitter has a, a tough swing yeah. every now and then, but they don't last because they're body aware they're ingrained, they can go put fixes on. I don't think the average person or player understands how much work it is to be a good hitter mm-hmm. or work to be a hitter whatsoever. But even the best 
always working on the game. And that's that's what's amazing because you know I talk with Doug and and I see what happens in the game. I'm seeing the end result, and Doug is really. You've been amazing with filling me in with, okay, how do we train this and how do we work on this and why is that happening? Why is that good? Why is that creating um, good timing and vision for a hitter and just filling in the pieces of what I'm seeing, you know, what I'm seeing consistently between all these guys and and you showing me kind of why that is and how the body's working and and, uh, how to train that and get that out of it. It's just been eye-opening. When you see and just to know that these guys are, we, we see them on TV, but they're working their tails off. And mm-hmm. they even at the highest level have a lot of questions. And number one thing is I want to be consistent. <laughs> yes. I want to be consistent because it's a long season. And I want to be able to carry those, you know, and perform as, obviously, as long as I can. And they're still working on it. So obviously hitting's hard, <laughs> but we got to try to make it easier and stop making it harder. Yeah, and even, a, you know, like even with the young kids, like you were saying before, a 160 pound or 150 pound kid, that 150 pound kid knows how to get all 150 pounds through the ball. Good thing it will go. Yes. It will go out of a high school field. Oh, yeah. And so the little leaders that are hitting it out. They're a little bit stronger. It's not, you know. That's but, when, yeah. but when you're 150 and you put 150, there's a lot of kids that are 200 pounds that are putting 50 pounds into the ball. Yes. And they're, you think they're going to hit our home run, and they never do. Or they might hit them in BP, and they don't hit them in games because they're off the line of the ball. But you take the little 150-pound kid. Who's got right dynamics. Yeah. Who will just use it all and stay on it and hit it flush and hit it clean. The ball goes, and you're like, well, how's that kid? How did that happen? Yeah, well, because he has a clean, easy move through the baseball. Yeah, and what people you know keep forgetting is, uh, the swing is a product of what your body allows it to be, and people forget timing. And you know that you know that's one of my my big biases. But we have to move on time too, and yeah. we have to get a sense of timing. We have to practice that. But if we practice that move to a good move to balance and having a backside control that move, so I'm not lunging forward, uh-huh. and just that I can control my move. So however I'm going to do it, I can control my move. Money in the bank. Uh-huh. And I said, you know, sometimes the boy that's doing this today, well, he might just be doing something like that tomorrow. He might be doing yeah. We don't know. They evolve as they get more comfortable. But it all predicates that we can train those little body moves, but nobody does it. Yeah. Because they're so worried about first, let's just hit the ball. Right. And we've kind of put the car ahead of the horse. Right. Let's get the body in a good position. Uh-huh. Let's keep the element of fun. Yeah. And let's try to work from there because... This is a tough game, and we're going to fail a lot. But we have to accept that failure. It's like, okay, I missed that pitch. I missed in that hole at bat. Whatever, and, but keep moving it forward because the next thing happens is we go mental. Right. We go mental. And that's just to get up the plate now, worried about trying to create a result, worried about things that other than, you know, let's go right. see you get a good pitch. Right. Let's take a good swing. Right. You know? You got to build that up because I think failure and anxiety are built into this game. And if we can't handle that, we're going to be in trouble as far as long term in the game. Right. And finding confidence through the good swings that maybe are just misses. Those just yeah. misses turn into in the ball a long way. Yeah. And as we talk about misses, I love misses. Yeah. People laugh. We teach misses. Yeah. When I'm working velocity or high level, you know, plus sliders, I love hitters come in and miss. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 balls. Miss them. I just want to see you miss maintaining a good hand path. I want to see you be able to miss with the feeling of a good, consistent swing. Don't worry about hitting the ball. That's secondary. Mm-hmm. Does your move now hold up? Then suddenly, you say, okay, it's time to hit. And suddenly now, guys are just squaring up balls that they never thought they could. But the average person jumps into a velo machine. The first thing I want to do is I've got to make contact with it from day one. First pitch, I've got to hit it. Mm-hmm. Miss three of those, and I'm going to do everything I can just right. make contact because I'm failing. No. You right. did it backwards. Yeah. Let your body adjust to the speed. Let your ju- adjust to the break. Let your body adjust. Let your swing be continuous. Let it be consistent. Then it times itself up, and next thing you know, there we are. And how many times have you talked about balance? I mean, oh, God, I'm a balance with but balance. But body, body and balance, like... 
incessantly. You haven't really talked about the parents. It's the body. It's the body. It's the body. Yeah. And the body. And kids, we got, we also got to train kids to to do the tough work, you know, and train the body. In, but I used to call it boring Get into work. a cage. Get into a cage and swinging five iron times. Is it going to fix you? Might, yeah. Might hurt you. Are you, are you, did you leave after five iron swings, do anything different? Did you just build in five iron swings yeah. doing something wrong? Yeah. And, and wrong to me? Yeah. Was your body working right? Were you able to get a big zone? Were you building a swing that you can build up from? Or is it a swing that's going to bury you? Correct. So to me, the key is, uh, and I don't care how old kids are, they can learn to make moves and practice those moves and sort of understand how their body works. Are they going to be perfect? No, but at least they're getting a better understanding, particularly how your halves relate. You know, we've got the front half, and we've got top half and bottom half, and how they relate. They can get there, but they can learn to make balance moves. The more they do it, the more the body understands that, oh, okay, I can do that. Then they said, okay, now I'll take a swing. And even some sort of swing may not be designed as a point of what your actual application will be. Um, but I was asked about sometimes how we, a lot of my hitters have this unique golf-like on deck swing. So the on deck swing will be simply being able to get to balance and take a golf swing because that's the swing that allows me to stay underneath my shoulders and still manage a line. So I can stay there. So I'm not going to swing like that, obviously, at a fastball up in the zone, but I want that feel of maintaining my line and not allowing my shoulders to engage. So when you just do that, go ahead and hold the bat. So his body, your body has a line. Mm -hmm. The pitch has a line, but because your body maintained a line, I got a good shot at that anywhere. You're good going this way. You're also good this way. Mm -hmm. So you have alignment and balance. And then whatever the pitch is doing, you can then adjust. Your line can be on the pitch line. And, and at that point, when we try to make hitting simple, it gets really simple, right. as you say all the time, when you move through balance. I mean, then the pitch will just tell you what to do. Once you turn it over. Yeah. If, and again, it's like I said, getting when kids, like I said, you see the, usually it's between 12 and 14, they start seeing a little bit of spin. And it's probably not good spin, but it's yeah. still different. And, you know, it's like, oh, my God, this big adjustment. Yeah. But as long as they start getting used to it, and then we go to the point of at what point can we really talk about pitch recognition and all these right. things. But, unfortunately, cart ahead of the horse, if a kid's got a bad move, if he's, just doing things that are awkward or trying to unleash on the ball. Right. He's not going to be able to have pitch recognition because there's a lot of strain going on here. There's a lot of things happening that are going to get in their way eventually. And people will applaud because, oh, my God, he just hit a home run. Well, is that going to translate to the next level? Is that is he going to do that at, home, at high school? Is a freshman in high school going to do it as a, you just keep moving your way up the ladder and realize what we'll always carry is, balance yeah and a good swing because yeah. it, you can build from there as we've talked about younger children uh -huh. younger men younger girls they're going to get different body strengths as they mature and that will play in but we can't rely on body strength to define our swing but everybody has their best alignment their best balance and that's something the biomechanists will agree with however I don't know if you see it, but I see a lot of times people describing the swing that are, you know, the biomechanists are saying this is what we want to see in the swing. I see things that aren't conducive to hitters. I see twists. I see back foot leaving the ground. I see things that are happening, which I'm like, no, I don't want that to happen. Um, people ask, well, why wouldn't you want the back heel to leave the ground? You don't want to squash. But I said, no, but what we want to do is when we get down to balance, we want to maintain the heels because that's where our body gets the ground at. We want the ground. We have to have that ground. That's our load. For years, kids were taught, you know, load back. Right. Well, that's a disconnect. They, they and when I disconnect here, first. when I disconnect here, I have no bottom half. I'm done. I have My halves are not working together. Right. My top half is doing one thing. My bottom half is really negated. And if you think about it, even if you're making a move to the ball, one arrow is going back, the other arrow is going forward. So we talk about maintaining balance and making a move in concert. But when I come down, I want that heel down as long as it can be, because that's channeling all that energy, and it's called energy is a magical word. Yeah. Yes, and it's called it's true. It's called potential kinetic energy. Yeah. The minute I land at fifty-fifty, I have I'm loaded for bear. 
up and down. Uh -huh. I've got more energy than this can ever create. And now, when I make my move, I now can expand that energy through the zone. Yeah. But again, the key is being able to understand how those moves are. And so it comes down to that magic word, balance. Yeah, and we have it. We have it this way. We have it this way. And we have it this way. And all that energy was controlled through the ground, through your heel. But you were able to maintain direction and balance at the same time. We're doing two things at once. Mm -hmm. But it gets easy if you if you just practice it. Yes, and it's so natural to you. You you know before you did several different styles, but everything was yeah. Because I wish I wish I did that when I was. Well, in I school. wish I did too. 